four jaw chuck I have found that in order to get it to run true the next chucking initially is if I back off these two jaws that I haven't moved about that much and then when I chuck the new part it'll run closer to being true so it's faster to indicate it in. So again, check the jaw 180 degrees from that jaw. It's got to come up just a little bit. But see, because I backed this jaw and the other jaw over here off a little bit, we're a lot closer. I'm going to come about half that to zero, and then I'm going to re-zero the indicator by moving the x-axis. and check that jaw on the other side. Right now that I got a little bit more tension on the jaws, I'm gonna make sure the stock is up against the shoulder of the jaws. That's pretty close to zero that way, so we'll do these other two now, which are very close, it looks like. Tighten the bottom one, then tighten this top one. We'll bring it back to zero. Tighten this one a little bit more. Then tighten the bottom one, and bring it back to zero again. Okay, now, let's make sure all four jaws are, are are tight. I'll tighten the other one first. See, we got to come up a little bit. Tighten the bottom. Make sure the top is tight. It is. Tighten this top one here. Bring it back to it's. It's running about a thousandth on the low side of zero here. I'm not really worried about this running perfectly true because we're actually taking uh, quite a bit of stock off this OD. This is six inch of the finished diameter up here close to the jaws is five and three quarters. So we're taking a quarter inch off the diameter. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna check all four jaws to make sure they're tight. I like to have this pretty tight because I'm running that pretty coarse API thread. Don't want to have any trouble because I'm only holding on to, oh, I don't know, about 800 thousandths of the stock there, right here. Okay, all the jaws are good and tight.
Now, I'm not really worried if this runs out here because we're turning quite a bit of stock off there and it'll just be turned off. So it's not really that critical. Put the um, Hamer indicator in, set my Z0. I've been setting this on every part because the stock isn't uh, quite sawed all the same length and I don't want to take too big of a facing cut because I don't want to pull this thing out of the chuck. Because that's exactly where you can pull a part out because the force is going down. When you're turning, it's pushing it into the chuck for the most part. Unless your insert breaks or something, and then it might not be. But for facing, you're pushing it down if you're taking too big of a cut. Generally, what I do here is I bring the indicator up to approximately zero. Then I run it around the part. See, this is, this is the low spot, actually. The part's not perfectly square. And I don't want to take off any more stock than necessary, but I want to... Um, set my zero at the lowest point so that I'm sure it cleans up. So here I'm going to set my zero 30 thousandths more in from there on the uh, Z zero. Teach minus 0 0.030 on the Mazak here and it calculates it as setting plus 30 thousandths here. This, um, there's an offset in the machine and it knows the length of this um, this is the length right here, 8.531, when, when this is on zero. And so I can just teach it that on the Mazak. It works that way on the Mazak. Here's the turning operation. First tool is the roughing OD, rough face and OD tool. Uh, CNMG 432 insert. I think we're running around 400-ish surface footage on this tool and 12 thousandths feet per revolution on the face and on the roughing. The depth of cut is an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch off the diameter per pass. I was kind of being um, a little conservative here because I'm only gripping onto a little bit of that part or the stock and I don't want to pull it out of the chuck. Here's a two and a sixteenth inch diameter drill just to drill through. The hole gets, the small part of the hole gets bored to 2.2 so this is just a slightly undersized. But something happened here. I was drilling and I had my camera set up and there's a little airline, a little clear plastic tube there. And you can see it gets caught in the shaving here. You'll see it in a second, right, right there. You'll see it right there. And wrap the airline around the drill and pull the camera into the drill. And you can see it's going around a few times then it ends up in the chip pan. So, didn't really have another piece of plastic tubing at that moment, so I finished recording the drill through the windows of the machine. The camera and everything was all right, but if you remember my earlier videos on the Noga bases, that's how it, it, uh, the Noga bases get messed up. That's happened before. So there's breaking through the part with the drill. Here's the rough boring bar, Sandvik silent bar, uh, CNMG 432 insert again, same feeding speed as the OD tool. I think though the depth of cut was only a hundred thousandths on the radius, so two hundred thousandths on the ID at one time. It's a lot of coolant I have to run with this um, operation, so it's kind of difficult to get clear video here on all of this. It's a finish OD tool. A VBMT insert. A 332. 4 thousandths per revolution feed. Uh, I can't totally remember this surface footage, but it's maybe about 500 or so. You notice I took two facing cuts with it because it's kind of critical that gauge face before I, I ran the finish pass on the whole OD. 
because those faces are a little bit critical. Just measuring the OD, there's a 15 thousandths tolerance on this diameter. It should be four and a half inches. It's about a little over two inches too big, but I'm not going to rerun the tool for that. Here's the rough, or the finished bore, I should say. Same insert as the finished OD tool, just on the boring bar. Again, the Sandvik silent bar. Same feed and speeds as the finish OD tool. Let me clear those shavings there a little bit. And then our uh, threading tool, the API um, four pitch thread, quarter inch lead. I think I was running around um, 400 RPM, I think, on this thing in that neighborhood. And there's quite a few passes. I think it's taken about 30 passes total to get this thread. It's about three thousandths per pass. And I intentionally stood off the offset so that it would gauge long here. It's measuring about 680 thousandths. Did you see with the caliper there? So that's about 55 thousandths long. And it moves about 12 thousandths per thousandth on the radius, so you, that, that ended up being about eight, a little more than eight and a half thousandths. I reran the thread, checked the gauge length again. It's, it's running a couple of thousandths bigger than the ideal size, but there's plus 10 thousandths tolerance on it, so I'm not going to rerun the threading tool for that. Wouldn't, it would hardly take anything to take that off anyway, so it's very little. It's a spot drill, kind of spot for the drill, the chamfer for the thread, I should say, and then I also put a spot for this face, this uh, spot facing tool. It only goes 50 thousandths, the half inch end mill, 50 thousandths deep. And then the 5 sixteenths drill, tap drill for a 3 8 16 thread. And then the thread mill. I had a little difficulty getting any kind of video at all on this because the high pressure coolant is just totally blocking the video. And there was little, you know, sections of video where you could see the tool. So I basically cut everything else and just so you could at least see the tool once in a while. But it actually takes a little bit longer than it appears here to cut that thread. And then we've got to gauge it with the gauge because we're milling it. Check it with the gauge. So it's 3816. 850,000. So that's the finished part on this end. I decided to do the first end on all the parts first because I don't have another tool holder to hold the threading tool that I need for the other side. I have to use the holder that I'm using for this thread. So I'm going to have to uh, do the other end separate. So that's it for this video and the next video we'll finish the part up on the other end. So thanks for watching.